Hello everyone, Greg Giglio, Principal of Homestead High School here with our weekly video message. I missed you guys last week, sorry I was not able to get one out, but uh, this week sort of has two weeks worth of stuff in one, so it's a good long one. Um, so this is for Friday, April 8th, so why don't we go ahead and get ourselves started. So we're going to start off with some shout outs and recognitions. We had one for Shay Bellamy, who is our college and career counselor, and uh, because she's, according to this person, she spent extra time on Zoom to answer all our questions for the college webinar for juniors. Honestly, you really need to get a second college and career counselor. She's doing the work of two or four people. Uh, appreciate that. And uh, yeah, we agree. She's doing a lot of great work. Uh, here's another shout out, or not another, but a shout out to the Homestead Robotics team. Team 670 is their official moniker. Uh, but they made it to the semifinals of the San Francisco Regional Competition a couple weekends ago. Uh, this is a great group of kids, and they should be proud of themselves. Uh, someone also put a shout out for Lisa Klosnitzer, one of our English teachers, and they just said for Lisa Klosnitzer, and they didn't say why, but she is also a, a great teacher and worthy of recognition. So there you go. Uh, another shout out to a teacher, and this is Kyle Bonvecchio in our PE department. He is the department lead for that one as well. He's also our golf coach. Uh, thank you for the clear and prompt communication regarding a PE issue. It was handled in an extremely professional manner. And then rounding out the shout outs and recognitions this week, we have Katie Heaney, who is one of our math teachers, uh, and she was to be noted for her kindness, which she's definitely famous for around here. So uh, there you go. That's this week's and last week's recognitions. Uh, it takes us to some concerns and questions. So first one was, now that colleges have sent acceptance letters, can you provide statistics on the percentage of the number of HHS students who got accepted per total applicants, especially for the all UCs and CSUs? It would be good to know how HHS is faring with respect to kids being admitted to colleges of their choice. Where can we find this info? <clears throat> we don't um, get that information just yet. Yes, the information the kids are getting accepted, but they don't compile all that data just yet. Uh, and if they do, they don't send it to us. So um, that's usually a little bit down the line. Um, this question, I think, probably came out because there was a bunch of chatter online about some data that was shared saying that Lindbrook's numbers had gone down in terms of acceptances for UCs and CSUs. Now, I haven't seen the data, so I can't speak to it. Um, but what I was told was that was some older data uh, for over the last two years. None of the, the current data is out right now, but this was some stuff that was compiled. Uh, how exactly they got it, I'm not sure, but um, that create, created some questions. But obviously, we've had a couple of weird years in terms of the pandemic and, and classes and all that kind of stuff. So I, I don't know that you can count the last two years as anything uh, particularly significant or not. But um, they, um, they're they going to be looking into that, they being the district office, and, and they're going to be looking into it, kind of doing a, a reach out to the UCs to see what's might be going on and, and get some information about that. So when I get information, I'll let you know. But where we do sort of get this information, just so you know, um, we do ask students to self-report this uh, at the end of year Naviance report. It does help us. It's a way for us to kind of see that data more quickly and, and maybe make some information about it. Um, the, uh, the senior edition, which is the last edition of the Epitaph, our, our, our student newspaper, that one has a spread on where seniors are headed to, but it's also self-reported and voluntary, so it's not necessarily a, uh, a comprehensive data source, so I don't know I'd go there. Um, and again, I, I already mentioned those other two bullet points, but uh, so no, we don't have that data right now. Um, we don't know how we fare against others, and um, but again, I know the district is looking into what maybe some of the concerns about that. So there may be more to come on that one. Uh, in that same request, there was another one about: Can you provide notices of students who got merit or commended scholar status after taking the PSAT in October 2021? Mm -hmm. These would be the current juniors this school year. It'd be good to know how HHS is faring with respect to these types of awards compared to other schools. Uh, and again, we don't get this information uh, for the the college board uh, when we, we get notifications of who's been named and, and awarded um, those definitely go towards the senior year when you use the national merit scholars um, but we're in, to my knowledge we don't have that general data as in specific to our school and other students so um, I don't really have that either so I know we do well but um, because we seem to have you know 20 to 40 kids every year that are on that list um, and that's a pretty good number compared to other schools so um, but other than that I don't get anything specific um, well, there's a question about why are there mostly STEM advanced classes? My kid wants to take AP World History and other humanities classes. Well, there is a district philosophy that has been around for years. It started, you know, again, at the district office, it's been at all the different sites. 
um, but is to set foundational classes in the ninth and 10th grade, then offer the advanced classes such as AP and honors to the 11th and 12th grade students. There's a, there are a few exceptions in there, um, but um, really what that means is something like world history, which is offered during a sophomore year, we would not offer an AP world history. Because again, looking at our ninth and 10th graders, yes, some of them are super advanced and, and can do some great work. But when you're talking about an AP course, you are talking about having kids operate like a college student. Um, and we, we've seen is some struggles like in AP Physics 1, which is a, a class that has gotten a little bit lower uh, requ recruitment of kids because they can start taking that sophomore year. And they've really struggled because they don't have the maturity or the academic chops yet to get in there. Um, some do, but not everybody. And so it's been, a hard, it's been a hard plug. But again, we do live in a very heavy science and math area. And so when we are a student-driven um, master schedule, meaning whichever classes you pick, those are the ones we're going to try and get you into. Um, and so we tend to have more students going for these advanced math and science classes than we do for humanities. So like even when we have an AP uh, lit class senior year, we only usually have a section or two of that, not very many, but you know, kids definitely are more interested in doing AP US history or AP gov. Um, but again, it's, it's, um, it's, it's been one of those things that we've had questions about for years, but we don't seem to have the interest in those other areas. Um, and so we don't offer those. And so something like, um, you know, the first humanities classes that you'd be able to get would be junior year, which is AP US history. We don't have anything in English because the English equivalent that year is something called AP language, which is a great class. I taught it many years back when I was a teacher. Um, and it's about writing and grammar and that kind of thing, but it's not a US history, US um, or an American lit class. And so, which is, goes with our graduation requirement of having all our juniors go through an American lit program. So that's, that's a bit of a complication. So that's one of the reasons why we do not offer that class. Um, and so again, uh, yes, it does tend to be a little bit more heavy science and math in our area, but um, that's so again, that's what students are kind of picking and that's what we tend to offer. So um, sorry that we don't, we're not gonna be doing AP classes in those lower grades, but uh, that is definitely something district-wide. <clears throat> there was a, another person who put in here, they had that more specific listing than this, but they had some concerns about the students, her student, his or her students, ninth grade English class regarding some grading that was going on there. And I'm afraid I can't really answer those because I, you haven't given me your student's name and I don't know who the teacher is. So I don't really, don't even know where to start with that one. So I can't really answer it. Um, I would suggest that you contact the teacher um, and ask those questions because that'll get more directly um, answered that way. If for some reason you're not getting any help or assistance, you can email me. You can also email Jeff Wright, who is our assistant principal who oversees the English department. Um, but, uh, you know, again, we can't help you if I don't really have specific information. So I don't know if it's a good situation or a bad situation. So um, if you want to email me back or, or send it directly through the parent survey, I would be happy to follow up on that one. Um, we wanted to kind of throw out some, some pieces of um, uh, advice and, and, and information out here, but with this coming of the year, we were starting to be a lot of spring breaks at colleges and uh, different schools and that kind of stuff. And so we are seeing an uptick in visitors to the campus. Um, so we do ask that um, only people who need to be here on official business, such as parents who have meetings or you know, guest speakers or other folks like that would, are coming uh, to our campus. And when you do come to our campus, we ask that you come to the front office and you check in. And if you're on our visitors pass list, we will give you a visitors pass and then you're free to walk around and get to where you need to be or be escorted to where you need to be. Um, but, uh, you know, again, we don't, while it's great seeing our, our returning students, they really technically shouldn't be on our campus because they're adults and they're no longer a part of the school. So they don't have a right to walk around like they normally do. Um, and it becomes a safety issue for us, right? We don't know if we don't know the people on campus and we don't know if there's issues going on there. Maybe sometimes we've had people come to campus to cause problems. So we don't want to have that going on. Um, so again, it's also considered a liability risk because if you have a person on campus that is not checked into the office that, you know, gets hurt or gets involved in something, then it's kind of our issue because uh, we should have known that they were there. And so again, that's why we asked that everybody check in. If you're, if you are not recognizable to us, um, or, you know, you're an adult on campus and you don't have a pass, either a district pass or a visitor pass from our office, we will come up and talk to you and say, hey, what's going on? Can I help you find what you're going for? Let me show you to the office and have you check in there. Um, again, it's just a way for us to control who's coming and going from campus so that we know at all times. Um, so again, please, if you have former students um, that are, are back home from spring break, uh, encourage them to email their teachers, 
so they can set up a time for them to be able to come because again we don't want them hanging out during class time maybe they'll come during their prep time or maybe they would come to visit somebody after school or before school uh, but we can't have them hanging around during campus so unless you know there some students come back and give presentations on their major or they give presentations on the college experience so if there's a specific reason and a teacher has organized that that's fine but otherwise we don't want people wandering around campus um, so we will politely ask them to go away and 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 because uh, again, if there's somebody who's who's on our campus who's not supposed to be here and they're causing problems, uh, we do admonish them, which means we tell them, you know, they're in violation of the law and that they could be subject to getting cited for trespassing. We then pass that along to our, our school resource officer so that in the event they come back, if they come back a second time, um, we just alert the, 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 the school resource officer and they'll go and cite that person for trespassing. So we don't want to go there. We've done that for definitely for people who have caused problems, uh, but we don't want to do that. And we would prefer that if you want to visit, do so at the correct times and all that. So um, again, your help in this is greatly appreciated. So if you're coming to campus, please check into the office and we'll get you a pass. Um, I've had a lot of questions and, and people wanting to do things to support Ukraine in terms of uh, the relief efforts that are going on there. So here are a couple of um, websites where you can learn more and donate and, and give time and whatnot. And so uh, these were collected by one of our uh, guidance counselors with some help from students. So um, again, you can pause the video here and, and take a look at that and write some of those down if you want. If you if you actually look at the PowerPoint that I include in the emails as well too, um, these will be links there and you can just click on the links from the PowerPoint. You should be able to get to where you need to go. So again, thank you for those of you who are interested in supporting Ukraine. Um, and who uh, those of us who helped get some of these um, uh, resources out to you. So thank you for that. I want to also point out that we have a new COVID testing schedule. We will no longer be having testing every Tuesday morning at Homestead. Um, as with the, you know, the kind of loosening of things that are going on and the requirements that are out there, we don't have as a bigger requirement to test. Uh, we, we, we are still offering testing every week throughout the district. It's going to rotate at these different sites. So if you see here this week, Monday was at Limbrook, Wednesday was at Fremont, and today, Friday, is at Cupertino. Uh, there is no testing on the Tuesday or the Thursday. Next week, um, on Monday, we'll be here at Homestead. Then we're at Monta Vista on Wednesday, the district office on Friday. You as a student um, can go, or as a, as a family member, can go to um, any of these sites. You just have to show your student ID or a connection to your student. Um, and you can go onto those campuses. Again, that's an acceptable place to go because it's usually at the front of the campus. Like for us, it's the field house. You go over there, you, you do that, you leave, there's no problem. It's if you're wandering around campus, that's a problem. Um, but again, this is the new schedule. So Mondays, every other Monday, starting the 11th, uh, there's no testing during spring break. And so because there's no testing during spring break, we kind of flip around to that. Um, you know, we skip that week, which would have been Lindbrook's time, Lindbrook. Fremont and Cupertino's turn. And instead on the week of the 25th there, you'll see that same schedule of, of all day Monday at Homestead, all day Wednesday at Monta Vista and all day Friday at the district office. Um, so again, that you'll, I'll put some of those dates up again on the important dates at the end there, but just please know that we switched that up because there is not as big a need. And so it was, it was kind of a waste of resources to have every day, all day, uh, and only a handful of people were showing up. So it'll still be offered, still get in, but um, just a little slightly different schedule. Uh, traffic reminder for this week is about the staff lot. Um, this is truly, the staff lot is the one that's right there with Mary Street dead ends into it. Um, it is for staff and construction parking only. Um, the only exception to that are visitors who do come by. Uh, and there's a couple of visitor spots, like say you have a meeting with a counselor or with an administrator, um, you know, you can come in there and, or maybe you need to come in and check with attendance or do something like that. You come in and park at those visitor spots, which are up close to the GSS building, up towards the office building. Um, so you're allowed to park there and then you come straight in, check in. And if you need to go somewhere else, you'll, you'll get, be given a pass. But if you're just in the office, you won't be given a pass because that's all you need. Um, we also ask that you do not drop off or pick up students in that lot. And again, because of all the construction, we do have mach machines and materials and whatnot com coming in and out. Um, so we don't want to have any any problems with you know accidents or, or traffic jams or that kind of thing so again please do not drop your students off or pick them up there um, we do though allow some students who have either injuries or disabilities to be dropped off in there or to be picked up in there because it is easier for them than doing it when the traffic is really busy such as in the horseshoe or in the um in the student lot 
Um, just again, it's, it's something we do. So if that is something that your student qualifies for, please just check in with the office. You can ask their counselor. You can ask Louise, who is our student uh, conduct liaison, who's always out in the staff lot in the morning. Um, you know, just come in and ask any of us and we can help you with that one. Um, we'd also ask that no, you know, bikes, skateboards, scooters, and even people walking down through the um, the, the staff lot, that's also a problem. So when bikes and scooters and stuff come in and out, it is hard to see them. And so we've had some near accidents there. Um, so please use the Mary Street bike path. Um, that's the easiest thing for you guys to be coming in and out. Um, and it's, it's meant to be a safer way to go. Um, <clears throat> I would just ask that we've had some issues too when we like in the morning when kids are coming into campus, they take the whole cement area uh, of the bike path. And so if someone's coming the opposite direction, it's the, you almost have a head on collision. So I know it gets a little crowded and a little thick there with the congestion of the bikes coming in, but please try and stay over to the right there so that you are allowing pa uh, people to safely pass by on the other side and the, whether that's walkers or other bikers, that kind of thing. And again, my big giant pet peeve is the community bikers who come flying down that hill and then decide to cut through our staff lot rather than use the lot as the parking thing. Yes, it might be more convenient for you, but it's also very dangerous. We have had a couple of near hits there as well too. Um, so again, if you are a community member or you know you, somebody here in the community who's biking through there, please tell them to not do that. Please tell them to go along the bike access. I know it takes them a few seconds longer, but uh, if they're going to go head to head with a car, they're going to lose. So I would prefer that they take the bike path. Um, now, the other thing, the other time we do open it back up again, that, that staff lot for events, like there's baseball games this, this time of year, that kind of thing. So we definitely can park after four o'clock there. And, you know, again, school's over at 3.30, giving our staff a chance to get out. Um, and then folks coming in and parking, you'll find parking spaces available after that time. So um, again, we won't be checking for parking passes or we won't be stopping you at that point, but just know that that's when it's available. Um, as we said, important dates, got a whole bunch of them coming up here. So I'm gonna get got two columns worth. So again, tonight we have the junior prom. So uh, if you didn't know about that, it's, <laughs> I hope you knew about that one by now, but that's happening tonight. Um, I think we've got almost 400 kids that are going to that one. So not quite as much as we have in the past, but again, glad to see people out getting dressed up and doing the, doing the fun proms and balls again. Um, on, again, as I said there, our COVID testing will be on Monday the 11th, the 25th, also May 9th and May 23rd. You can kind of see it popping over on the second column there. Or, yeah, May 23rd. So those are when, if you're looking for to come to specifically to Homestead for testing, uh, that's when those will be happening on the campus. Again, it's happening at the other places um, on those other days. Uh, what do we got? It's speak week of April 18th. That's our spring break. So looking forward to that one. Uh, and we get back from that. It's really, uh, we're rolling pretty quickly. We, we hit into the thick of things, right? We got AP, AP exams beginning. Um, we've got senior ball happening on the 20th. We do have a, a PTSA general meeting on the 18th. Uh, and then we start to get into the senior celebrations where we're doing senior awards, we're doing senior celebration. And again, that used to be what we called baccalaureate. Um, I think I explained this last time, but it's no longer called baccalaureate because baccalaureate actually has religious um, meaning behind it. And so it's not a religious ceremony. It is actually just a, a secular fun celebration that everybody is welcome to, even students who aren't graduating. Um, that's from the senior class are allowed to attend that and it's a lot of fun so definitely want them to go to that. Um, we do not have school on um, the 30th because it's Memorial Day. We come, when we come back from that we have uh, the uh, regular finals their senior finals but seniors will be taking their finals before uh, the 31st. Um, so just know that that's happening then they come back for graduation practice and all that. Uh, but finals go from the uh, May 27th to June 2nd and then on June 2nd we have graduation at 5 p.m. so, uh, looking forward to seeing all of you there to celebrate that. So again, thank you for sending in all your um, comments and questions and shout outs. And sorry, I was not able to get it out last week. Uh, I'm sorry that this one's probably a little bit longer, but I uh, got all that information. Lots of good stuff. So please send me your comments, questions, recognitions, suggestions, and you may see it here on uh, the next video. So take care, everybody. I know it's been hot one this week, so hopefully it's not too hot, although the weather's supposed to break, but I hope you have a nice relaxing weekend. Take care.